Welcome to Mad Medicine's lecture on the MCAT, especially the biology section of the MCAT. We're going to be talking about the cell theory in this video. If you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, you can find a playlist for the MCAT biology portion. And there, all the videos that we have done pertaining to MCAT bio are located for your convenience. So go check it out. While you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because it'll really, really help us out. With that being said, let's talk about the structure of this lecture because it's important to know what's going to happen. First of all, we're going to talk about the basic information that you need to know. Then we're going to talk about the cell theory, a little bit of the high yield information. Then we're going to talk about the high yield MCAT questions that you may be asked when it comes to the cell uh, uh, theory. Now let's talk about the basic information. Let's talk about the cell theory. And of course, we're going to knock out the useless information first because let's be honest, if you get tested on this, I'm sorry, it sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. So let's talk about uh, some things you just need to know. Number one, in 1655, a monk by the name of Robin Hook, Robin Hook looked at a cork via a crude microscope. And he noticed that there were some small honeycomb-like structures, but he didn't see anything else. He didn't see any nuclei, he didn't see any organelles, nothing else, right? Uh, two main reasons. Number one, I'm pretty sure his uh, microscope wasn't strong enough. But number two, it was also a cork. And a cork is a dead, uh, something that's dead. It's not really living. So you're not going to see any sort of organelles in that case. But what's important is he was the first person to notice such a structure. And because he was a monk who lived in a monastery, he lived in these little tiny rooms called cells. So he coined and you know named these little structures cells because it just reminded him of his room. So that's how the name cell came out. And I'm pretty sure Robin Hooke uh, also created the very first uh, uh, microscope. I could be wrong, so, you know, just some dumb facts. 1674, Anton van Leeuwen Hook, I messed that up, my bad, looked at the first living cell. And in 1850, Rudolf Virchow demonstrated that diseased cells could arise from normal cells in normal tissues, a.k.a. we now call that cancer. So he actually demonstrated that cancer uh, could occur. And uh, fun fact, in medicine, when you have gastric cancer, it's cancer of the stomach, uh, and it, it metastasizes to a lymph node, we call that a specific lymph node near the neck, we call that lymph node a Virchow's node, okay? And uh, there are also many other things named after Robin, Rudolf Virchow, sorry, Rudolf Virchow, like uh, Virchow's triad, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things that this guy did. But what you just need to know is that he pretty much realized that cancer could occur. So this is the useless stuff. If you get tested on it, again, my bad, it sucks. Uh, and you shouldn't be, I think it's a really dumb thing to be tested on. So let's talk about the high yield stuff for the cell theory. There are four main concepts to the cell theory. There are four main tenets. The first one is that all living things are composed of cells, okay? All living things are made up of cells. The cell is the basic functional unit of life. That makes sense. These two kind of go hand in hand because if all living things are made up of cells, they must be the basic functional unit of life. Cells arise only from pre-existing cells. Hmm, that's pretty interesting, so keep that in mind. And that cells carry genetic information in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that they pass on from the parent to the daughter. And that is the cell theory in and of itself. That's what is happening with the cell theory. Now, one thing to understand is that viruses... Viruses break the third and fourth laws. So even though we classify them as, you know, cells and they could be living, we don't think, you know, uh, we don't think about the fact that they actually break these, uh, this, these tenets of the cell theory. The reason why is because viruses cannot reproduce on their own. That's very important. They cannot replicate without invading other cells. So they have to replicate by invading other cells. And they contain RNA instead of DNA. Okay, now that's not always the case, but that is definitely one of the, the things right here. We clearly said that uh, in the cell theory that cells pass on DNA to their daughter cells that they you know replicate. So let's do some high yield questions for the MCAT stuff you definitely need to know stuff that might, you know, push your, your limits a little bit. So let's, let's just dive right into it. Question number one, which of the following statements is not a pair or sorry, it's not a part of the cell cycle. So go ahead, read the question slowly, go ahead and read the answers and pause the video and then come back when you're ready.
Okay, so I'm sure you guys had enough time. Let's just dive right into the answer. And the answer is cells carry RNA to pass on to their daughter cells. That is not true. And why is it not true? Because of this part right here, cells do not carry RNA. In fact, they carry DNA. So if it said cells carry DNA, it would be right. The rest of these are completely true. They are a part of the cell cycle. And this, this number A, is not a part of the cell cycle. All right, pretty straightforward. Question number two. Oh my God, you're probably complaining. Oh my God, there's so many options. How am I gonna do this? Listen, guys, if you get a question like this, chill out, okay? Take a second, read through the question, and then just read the answers and answer the question. Calm down. These questions are made to trip you up and uh, psych you out. All you gotta do is chillax a bit. So read the question, go ahead, and uh, pause the video and then come back when you're ready. All right, so question number two. A graduate student teach, is teaching a lecture to his class about the cell theory. One of the students raises his hand and asks why viruses negate the cell theory. Which of the following is the correct answer? A, viruses replicate on their own. B, viruses only replicate with the help, help of other cells. C, viruses only uh, use RNA to replicate or viruses use both RNA and DNA to replicate or uh, these four, A and C, A and D, B and C, B and D. And the correct answer is H, B and D. Viruses can only replicate with the help of other cells. They can't replicate by themselves because they don't have the necessary machinery in their cell to do so. And when they, when they uh, attack another cell, they actually take over that host cell's replication uh, materials and, uh, and enzymes in order to replicate. And then D, viruses use both DNA and RNA. A lot of you guys might be thinking that the right answer was C. It's not the right answer because uh, although uh, viruses have RNA, they also some viruses also have DNA. That's very, very important to understand because not all viruses only have RNA. There are certain viruses, there are several viruses out there that also have DNA. So you definitely need to understand this concept, okay? And with that being said, that's all you need to know for uh, the cell theory. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because if you guys watch this and you didn't subscribe, come on, what are you doing? Go and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be posting regularly for you guys for your benefit. Uh, and you can follow us on all of our social media accounts right here. We're also on TikTok, so follow us there and on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.